Hey guys, so Duck Duck Goose, huh? This is the guy that a lot of people are kind of saying that uh, Golovkin is ducking, and we're gonna do a film study on him and see how good he is. You know what kind of things he does well. Uh, remember when we do these film studies, and this one's not gonna be like um, a breakdown, or like um, it's not gonna be like chopped up. We're gonna be watching the fight and analyzing it and kind of picking out ideas. Um, uh, but I wanted to start in round five, uh, where he knocks this guy out, Kamal Russell, um, who actually uh, seems to have a very good base for boxing, um, understanding um, how to control his opponents, sometimes how to set his shots up. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information on him, but I guess in the broadcast they say that he won like some Jamaican boxing tournament that was similar to, um, I didn't want to say Golden Gloves, but you know, just a a, a uh, a championship for his country and um he seems to be like a pretty good fighter so this is a good film study to do it on um but i want to talk about first i want to talk about the idea that um golovkin fighting well i'll talk about it at the end of the end of the video whether or not i think golovkin is ducking this guy or not but uh let's get a look at what i'm talking about first go ahead and put it in slow-mo boom so what we're watching here is how Derevchenko knocks Kamal Russell out. And then we're going to go back and watch the film study and kind of try to pick up on the idea, see how long it takes uh, Derevchenko to pick up on it as well. And we're also going to be looking for other skills and stuff, which I'll explain in a second after we get to the knockout. But here we have Kamal Russell fainting forward, right? Boom. Steps on that lead foot. And then he shoots a jab. And what does Derevchenko do? He slips to the outside, changes his weight, and then launches off of his right leg to shoot this overhand right, boom, and really hurts Kamal Russell. And that's the beginning of the end. But let's go ahead and just watch it again. So we're going to have Kamal Russell. He's going to faint forward, and then he shoots a jab, uh, and then he gets cracked. So that's what we're going to be looking for in the film study, and we're going to look for the different ways that uh, Derevchenko looks to take advantage of it, um, how long it takes him to see it, and what combinations and what what he does when he sees it and um we're also going to be looking at uh Derevchenko's offense we're going to look and see how he sets his offense up how many feints he uses if he uses any probes all the tools that he uses to get Kamal Russell out of position before he throws his offense to make sure that it's as safe and he can mitigate the the uh the amount of risk he puts himself in throwing punches and we're going to look at his defense um, how often he moves off the line after he attacks, how often he moves off the line when his opponent is attacking, um, and all the things that he does uh, to defend himself, um, not just blocking punches, which I'm not, uh, I don't condone usually. I don't think it's the smartest strategy, um, but how he gets away of, uh, from his opponent's offense, whether it be taking a step back, moving to the side, you know, lateral movement, um, or pivoting off the line. Um, and then we're also going to be looking at, at his guard, you know, how often he's moving or using his lead hand, how often he's controlling his opponent, how often he's moving his head, rolling, slipping, um, and how often his head is moving um, to, to not only has his active guard, how, it, how it's going to affect his opponents and his opponent's ability to throw punches at him, but um, how his uh, active guard uh, gives him a passive sort of defense when fighting. Um, and so those are all the things we're going to be looking at. So let me just go ahead and go back. And we're going to take a look. Here we go. Derevchenko. And now, a few things to note. This guy has over 400 amateur fights. Uh, I think he's 390 wins with 20 losses. Um, and I don't know how many gold medals he has, if he has any at all. I'm not sure. Um, but he also has... 24 fights in the World Series of Boxing. So he's not an 11-round professional fighter. Um, granted, those are against amateurs, right? Uh, but it's not a real amateur setting. Um, I mean, kind of is, you know, you're fighting like young prospects. But he was 23-1 and one in, the, in the World Series of Boxing. Um, and he was beaten, actually, by a smaller guy, um... Brian Castaño, Castaño. I'm not sure if his name is first name is Brian. I forgot. Um, I had it. I looked it up a few uh, a few hours ago. But his name is 
or but his he's actually a, a junior middleweight uh, world champion. He fights at 154, and he was able to beat uh, Derevchenko. Um, anyway, that's just a little background of him. Uh, so he's got you know a lot of pro style fights. He has he's very 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 experienced. Um, so that's that's kind of what we're thinking, uh, or what we're, we're gonna be like analyzing from. Now, first thing we notice, right, comes out, and uh, his head is on the line, right? It's not going anywhere. Like there's a little bit of movement, right, which is good. We'll see if he holds on to it. But mostly he moves his gloves, right? Look how his gloves come up when he moves in, right? And his opponent steps on that lead foot, right? Watch that. Again, very common in the amateurs, right? Uh, step on the lead foot and then control. But I want to point out that Kamal Russell looks phenomenal. Um, he looks like he has a very solid base using that lead hand control right here. Um, controlling Derevchenko when Derevchenko faints him. What does he do? He sticks his lead hand out there and says, uh-uh, boy, you ain't coming in here. Um, but And then he takes a step back. Move off the line. Again, fainting him right there and finding him out of position and kind of trying to steal a free jab right there. Uh, but Kamal Russell looks like a very good fighter, you guys. But he's not who we're looking at. But I do want to give him a shout-out. He looks really good. A lot of testing. Look at this guy. Fainting, right? Level change, slight level change. Fainting again, right? And uh, not just going out there winging punches, you know, doing his homework. Doing the work to set the punch up, right? But um, let's get back to Derevchenko. And uh, I'm going to kind of let it play. But some fainting from Jamal. Or Kamal. Um... Fainting from um, from Mr. Derevchenko now. He comes forward. And look at how he, when he slides forward, right, he dips his shoulder down, right, in case he walks into a jab, right? Or, uh, I mean, you're not going to get away from a right hand right there, but he can slip to the outside of the jab and then come back with the shot. Um, not a lot of head movement, though. Not a lot of an active guard. Kind of stuck there, right, a little bit. Good fainting, though. And again, you can see exactly what I was talking about right there. When he faints and he dips his head off the line right there, gets away from the jab that Kamal is trying to use to uh, control him. Uh, and there he goes, just shooting his jab. You know, not not a lot of setup here, right? He's coming forward and he's kind of on that timing, right, where he's he's fainting forward, but now he's committing to the jab. Now that he thinks he knows what uh, what Kamal's doing, but look at how Kamal responds. Right? He changes level. He looks like he's really out of position right here. But what does he do? He sticks his glove into um, Derevchenko's face and says, hey, I'm controlling you. Right, And then he gets away with the jab. But just all that because he was able to stick his glove out in Derevchenko's face and kind of make him think, oh, he's going to set something up. you know. But he was able to get from a poor position into a, a superior position and actually land a scoring blow uh, because of it. Some good probing from Kamal. And look at how Derevchenko reacts to it, right? He's not really reacting, right? Probe, he brings his gloves up, eats a jab right there. Catching it, right? Just moving back and parrying, right? But moving kind of out of position. But he's also moving, circling to his right, right? So maybe he can get away from the right hand if it comes right there. Um, but again, look at how stationary his head is. It's on the line. you know, And that's something that's very worrisome. Because if somebody wants to attack him, right? Exactly, his head's right here. If somebody wants to attack him or be aggressive, obviously they want to be worried about the, the counters, but because his head is kind of stationary on the line, that means it's not going to be that difficult to get him out of position, right? Um, he doesn't. He's not going to have as many places for it to go. Like right here, dipping around, rolling, right, when he's off the on the ropes. Um, shifting his head again to the right side. Um, and now right here, look at how he catches the jab right here. And he leaves his head there and eats that shot, right? What if it was a different shot? What if it was a fainted jab into a hook? What if Golovkin, right? This is a tactic that Golovkin likes to use. Um, he likes to fake a hook, right? And he'll throw it like this, boom, hoping that you'll see the, the hook coming from this side. You'll turn away from it and block, right? Because you see it coming, right? And then the right hand comes straight down the pipe and he can crack you with it. It's a very simple setup for a Golovkin. He uses it quite often, Um but so far, it doesn't look too difficult to get Derevchenko not only out of position, um, but easy to hit him because of the fact that he doesn't really move his head off the line. Um, and he hasn't really attacked yet either. And there you go. So he starts throwing punches. And are these set up? Not really, right? He just kind of shoots out of his guard on that front leg um, and shoots a couple jabs to get off of the, get off of the ropes, right? Um, but nothing special, right? Obviously, he's not trying to KO 
um, Kamal uh, off of off of those shots. He's just trying to create space and get off the ropes. Um, not a lot of head movement though. Shooting that jab and interesting, right? Shoots that jab, right? And I think Kamal is actually going for a hook right here. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to hook him because uh, Derevchenko is doing a, a cross block with his jab. So his, his right hand goes from here, and he shoots the jab. Catch the jab here as it comes to his chin, and he can catch him with his own shot. But he goes with a hook instead, and it looks like he kind of touches him. But um, one thing to note so far is that was like like a decent movement, right? He, no, he understands, okay, right here. So Kamal right faints here and now shoots a jab right and this is probably not the first time that he's done it um sorry for not pointing it out the the other time but Derevchenko knows to roll it right he sees the shot coming rolls it and tricks Kamal into thinking oh maybe there's something else coming right maybe he's gonna do another punch maybe he's gonna do something else um you know maybe he's gonna roll that shot and come over the top with a right hand and he gets Kamal to kind of move back now looking at this offense right um, he shoots the jab, shoots the jab, and then throws a hook, right? Now, this is exactly what I was talking about um, uh, Derevchenko doing is cross-blocking, right? Catching the jab, right? Getting your glove in front of it to block it, and then being open for the hook, right? It's very common. Um, it's a very common style of offense, right? Canelo uses it. Mayweather used it for a very, very long time. Um, but it's a very common trap now in boxing, um, and people are very aware of it, right? Derevchenko kind of lands that, like, grazing left hook. But let's look at the setup for it. All right, let me know when you guys see the setup. Okay, so he didn't know how his opponent was going to react to the two jabs, um, aside from the time where he threw the jabs uh, when he was on the ropes a few seconds ago, right here, right? So how does Kamal react? He moves back and does the same motion, right? Um, so the double jab comes. And he ducks down like this with the cross block over his head, right? And Kamal does the same thing in this instance right here, right? Tries to get away from it. And Derevchenko picks up on the pattern really quickly, baits him into the similar uh, defense, and, um, uh, and is, you know, kind of catches him with a grazing hook, right? So it, it's not important that it doesn't land, right? But it is important that he... He used that strategy to set up his future shots, right? That even though it doesn't look like it's a great setup, right? He, But he knew how um, how Russell was going to respond to the double jab uh, and, and is looking to set stuff up off of that attack. And that's really important to note um, because it shows that he has... Um, he has, he's very experienced. And we know he has a lot of fights, right? Like, there are a lot of fighters that have a lot of fights, um, but they're not good at picking up patterns, especially one minute into the fight, right? Um, they're not good at setting stuff up one minute into the fight. They don't know how to do that. Um, so that shows that he has a very high IQ, right? But what, what does he do after this, right? He stays on the line. Right? He doesn't move, he doesn't throw that hook and then slip and roll and do something. Um, he just kind of expects Kamal to not be in position to counter. And we'll see where that takes him later on. But so far, um, even though he's had some decent rolls and stuff, no real points for defense. Right? He's, he doesn't look to control Kamal after he throws the shots. He doesn't look to move off the line. Um, so no points there. And then Kamal trying to be kind of cheeky. Uh, I love this from a competitive fighter. Jab, jab. And he goes for his own hook. Right? But... Unfortunately for him, Derevchenko is able to pick him off and catch him with the jab, right? Boom. And control him, right? And stop him from landing his own shot. And what I like about Kamal versus um, Derevchenko, after he shoots that hook, look at how he brings his lead hand back into um, uh, Sergei's uh, face, right? He, like, throws that hook, boom, right? And then he's like, whoa, and he goes to control him, puts his glove in his face, and moves back off the line. Um, I like that from Kamal. I think that that's a very, very, very important strategy. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing a, um, a video on it, uh, talking about boxing technique and why it's important. But if you if you watch this real quick, whoops, when he shoots this jab and he shoots this hook, look at how all his weight transfers to his right leg, right? His whole body is positioned this way. He's not going to be able to rip 
all of his weight from here back to here to block the right hand from the right hand counter that um, that Sergei is in position to throw, right? Is it really possible for you to whip all your weight back, right, to block a shot faster than your opponent is able to whip their right hand, right? No, you're not going to be able to. With the momentum that your hand is 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 taking in that direction because you just missed that shot, no. So you bring it back, and rather than waiting to get your weight transferred, you control your opponent at the same time. So you you basically you half the amount of time that it takes for you to get back into position, right? So instead of ending here so you can block the shot, right, you're here, right, before you bring your hand back. Um, and your opponent thinks you're going to throw a punch at them or you're able to control their body and push off. There are a lot of different ways you can control your opponent after you throw a shot and you miss. So some fainting, level changes from Derevchenko. And what does he see from, from Kamal off the level change? What does he see? He thinks that it's going to be a body shot, but he stays up. Kamal doesn't change levels with him. So what does he do? He gives him another level change, sees the same defense, and then shoots a body shot, right? So this is how you faint, by the way, you guys. There are a lot of fighters in boxing who will they'll just flash a feint, and they don't care how their opponent reacts to it. They just flash the feint and then throw any punch, right? But Derevchenko so far has used the double jab, right, into a left hook, and now he's using the level change to get Kamal out of position to see how Kamal reacts to it, right? And Kamal goes like this, right? And then Derevchenko's like, okay, cool, free punch, right? So he does the same thing. Kamal does the same exact defense and eats a body shot, right? Uh, very smart, very smart. Pick, he, so far, he's set two traps to land two different punches in the first round, right? Shows a very, very high IQ from Derevchenko. Um, one thing I want to talk about, though, what does he do after he lands this right hand? Nothing. He pulls straight back. He doesn't bring his hands up. He doesn't move off the line. He doesn't take a step back. He just stays there. Um, and that leaves him open for a counter, right? Uh, especially because if you watch his front leg, he takes a huge step, right, to move into punch range uh, to land that shot. Um, and that's something that's worrisome, you know. That's something that gets filed into the defense area of boxing and is is really important for understanding how to fight and how to throw punches in combinations. Very good job from Kamal Russell right there. So we have Kamal Russell fainting, right, and then shooting the jab, right? And then he goes to faint again right there, and Derevchenko catches him, right? Shoots his own jab, right? But Kamal Russell, I think pretty underrated, you know, to be honest, aside from his predictability, right? He has good defense, right? And he controls Derevchenko. And look at how look at how Derevchenko beats him to the line. He's like, oh, I've seen this. He beats him to the line, but because he's being controlled by that lead hand, Derevchenko can't throw a shot. You know, he... What's going to happen if he throws a shot like that? He's going to move into it. He's going to move into Kamal's elbow, right? He's going to he's going to eat an elbow in his own face uh, that he runs into. Um, now, man, I don't even want to talk about whether that's fair or not. Who cares? It's real. <laughs> but um, then Kamal coming forward and look at how he disguises this right hand, right? It's really interesting. So he kind of ducks down like this, gives a probing lead hand, right? And and he hopes that. Derevchenko is going to respond by bringing his hands down, uh, which he kind of does, right? But the bigger problem is that Derevchenko's head is always on the line, and he eats those shots right there, and again, eats those shots again. So he, I'm not sure. Let's see if that right hand lands, because it might get blocked by the glove. It looks like it hits him. It looks like Derevchenko's hand is way down here. It does look like he fainted him into bringing his glove down by changing ink, uh, changing levels, right? Um, but then he also lands the cross, right? So after he gets hit with that shot, he doesn't move off the line. He doesn't spin, pivot, and he doesn't control Kamal, right? And what does he do? He decides to roll and, and slip the next right hand, but he doesn't move off the line here. Like So look at what happens. Because he doesn't move off the line here... He stays there, and he gets hit by that, that left hook from Kamal. It's very similar, actually, to the knockdown with um, Saddam Ali, 
right? He stayed way too close on the inside without controlling his opponent and, and moving off the line too slow. You know, Sanam Ali in that idea in that regard had the right idea. His just his execution was just so slow. Um, and when he slipped, he didn't control his opponent, right? You slip, you control your opponent, you give your weight to them to stop them from throwing punches. Um, but also when he slipped, he slipped really far down on his leg um, instead of just slipping and moving off the line right away. Um, and Munguia was able to catch him with the shot. Who knows how that guy beat Saddam Ali anyway. I don't know. I can't find the fight anywhere. So if anybody finds it, let me know. But um, so far, not great defense from, um, from Derevchenko. In spite of the fact that you can see him, right? Um, you can see him moving off the line, right? Rolling. You can see him slipping shots. But you can also see him getting caught, right? And it's more important that you move off the line um, uh, as your defense than it is being able to block or slip or roll punches because when you demonstrate that you're going to you're going to slip and block and roll punches and stay on the line, all your opponent has to do is feint you, right? Exactly how Derchenko was lead left hand, lead left hand, and then Russell would slip down like this, get away from it to catch it, and then eat that left hook to the head because he was doing things like slipping the punches and staying on the line. Um, and that's how you get set up for traps is because when you're doing that stuff, you're out of position, right? And if you're, you're in the position to get hit by other punches that you're not blocking or that you're not putting yourself out of position for. And again, Kamal Russell doing a good job of controlling Derevchenko, not allowing Derevchenko to come in. And what happens? Boom. Beautiful shot from Derevchenko, or from Kamal Russell, because Derevchenko doesn't set his shots up. He tries that same tactic where he shoots the two lead hands, right? Uh, but Kamal, instead of panicking and moving back, he just takes a small step back and then follows Derevchenko's jab back, catches him with the big right hand. One of the reasons why this is important is because he hasn't been fainting during either of those two setups um, for his jab, right? The first one, he just exploded off the the guard or out of his guard off the ropes and shot those jabs paid very close attention to Kamal Russell and how Kamal Russell reacted to it but um, he he wasn't fainting so he made that very predictable right very predictable in the same regard that Kamal Russell is predictable and we'll see more of that later so again Kamal Russell doing a very good job seemingly very underrated fighter beautiful and I love this from Kamal Russell I don't want to like make this like too much about him, right? But look at how he gets fainted out of position. He slips, right? He continues to move his head, right? And off of that slip, he looks to set up offense and explode out of his guard, right? So slip, boom, and come back with shots, you know? I really like it. I'm, a, I'm So far, I'm a pretty big fan of Kamal Russell. Um, and I'm glad to see that he won his next few fights after um, after the, that huge KO that he has against Derevchenko. Um, now, this is not the greatest angle to, to talk about, but we're going to try to break it down a little bit. So, Derevchenko coming in with a hook, right? Closing the distance, but it's not a real hook. It's a, hey, look at this. Let me get closer. Let me get closer. And then he starts giving him the jab, the lead jab to, to kind of probe him. And what does Kamal Russell do? He faints him back. He says, oh, now it's my turn. Slips a shot. And again, Kamal Russell hiding his shots, right? Dip, dip this way get all his weight on his right leg, and then try to sneak a right hand over. You know, he, he does get a little predictable with that, but look at how he look at how out of position he is right now, right? And how these feints, faint right here, and then uh, Derevchenko tries to control him or catch the jab, I mean, um, and then he shoots the right hand, right? And whether it's even supposed to land or not, it's creating space for Russell, for Russell to get off the ropes, for Russell to stop... Um, Derevchenko from landing offense, even though he does land a, a left hook to the body, it looks like right here, off of that shot. So great, great technique from um, from Derevchenko. And again, part of it is because Kamal Russell is being very predictable when he dips down like this. Um, I think Derevchenko is able to pick up on the fact that, that the right hand is coming. I think he's thrown two or three with that same style. But um, again, whoops. Um, Russell fainting, right? And then going to the body with the jab, right? So faint, even though it kind of sticks his arm out, and then committing to another shot, um, the same pattern. Faint, 
And now again, Derevchenko picking up on it, right? Feint right here, and then he sticks his lead hand out there. Um, and Derevchenko is trying to pick that timing out, right? He Obviously, like in this instance, Derevchenko guessed wrong, right? Um, Russell wasn't committing to the shot, but this is the timing that he's looking for, is, is the first uh, feint or the first probe, right? And then the next attack is the next time he does something is supposed to be an attack. Um, and then again, Kamal Russell dips, dips, uh, dips down to his right and then comes overhand with the right hand, right? And something that's very common for him to do. But look at what he does after. He shoots that second cross, right? And then controls Derevchenko. Derevchenko beats him to the line, right? But Derevchenko can't come back with any offense because he's being controlled right there. Oh, and we're going to do two rounds, by the way. We're going to do two rounds. Um, again, uh, getting getting him out of position with the same technique, right? No counter this time, right? But Derevchenko expecting the right-hand counter because Kamal ducked down to his right again. So it's really interesting that... Um, and again, let's w watch his guard, right? Let's watch... Um, Derevchenko's guard, right? When that when that jab comes right there, what does he do? He blocks it and he moves back, right? He doesn't move off the line expecting a right hand. Um, he doesn't control um, Kamal, right? After the shot comes, he doesn't control him by sticking his lead hand out or his, or his reverse hand out, right? To be like, hey, look at this. Don't throw a right hand. Hey, look at this. Don't throw a right hand. You know, he doesn't give him any head movement. He doesn't do anything, right? And his head stays on center line, right? Pulls away from this jab right here. Obviously, he knows it's not going to land, right? So he feels safe. But how difficult is it going to be for Golovkin to feint him, slip under, right, and then come over the top with the right hand? It doesn't seem to be very difficult to get um, Derevchenko out of position, even though Derevchenko is a very good fighter. Don't get me wrong. Looking to counter the jab with the hook now. Boom. And again, right, it's not important that it doesn't land, right? But look at this. He controls him when the jab comes, and boom, comes back with his own right hand, right? And this is a product of the fact that Derevchenko doesn't move off the line. The shot doesn't land, right? But a better fighter will land that shot when his opponent stays on the line with him after throwing punches. And Golovkin is a... Um, I think the best way to describe it is like an aggressive counterpuncher, Right? One thing that he really likes to do is faint you, faint you, get you to react to the faint, and then counter your counter whatever you're you think you're gonna counter him with. Again, Derevchenko staying on the line during this exchange, right? Um, he doesn't have to pay for it, which is not the point. Um, and again, Kamal looking very good, shoots that hook, rolls Derevchenko's head. He doesn't put him in a headlock right there, but he rolls his head, boom, and then turns him out and looks to push him off, right, uh, and create space. Um, I'm a big fan of Russell. I, I think that he's got a lot of potential. You know, hopefully this was a good learning experience for him. Control, control, right? And look at how easy it is to keep Derevchenko on the outside, right? We've seen Derevchenko, like, obviously, I think we all think he's winning the round, right? Probably, I don't know, not really, maybe. It's been a slow round. But Derevchenko hasn't had a lot of output because he's been controlled so much by Russell. Now here he goes with the jab to the body, right? And I think he's expecting like maybe a right-hand counter from Kamal, and he looks to set up that left hook off of it, right? I'm not sure if he does anything later with that. But again, when he shoots this jab to the body, what does he do? He stays on the line, right? And he is looking to set up that left hook. Maybe if he thinks a counter, a right-hand counter is coming, he'll be able to land that shot before um, before Kamal lands it, right? Very dangerous. Either way, if you're wrong, you might lose the fight. Um, but he stays on the line again. Derchenko staying on the line again after getting hit by that jab, right? Boom. Uh, and he stays on the line. Fainting, changing uh, levels. Fainting right there. Fainting, Russell just taking a step back, fainting himself, right? And again, that same timing, right? Faints, right? And then a real shot comes, right? Um, and again, it's really important to note, Derevchenko stays on the line, right? 
after he gets fainted, he stays on the line. He knows that a shot might come, right? But look at how close this shot comes to landing, right? I know, you know, uh, horseshoes and hand grenades, right? But the idea is that a better fighter, Golovkin, much better than, than Russell, um, is going to be able to land these shots, right? Maybe we'll see a different um, a different Derev Derevyevchenko. God, I'm going to kill that. I'm not even going to say it, Sergey. <laughs> um, maybe we'll see a different one, a better one, when he fights Golovkin. But so far, uh, very poor defense, right? He hasn't had a, to worry about a lot of offense from Russell. Russell's been mostly worried about defense himself, but but not a lot of defense from him. And again, stays on the line and gets hit by that cross, right? He does land his own left hook, but again, you don't want to be trading punches with your opponent ever because you never know if they're going to have the upper hand. Um not moving off the line very well again after getting away from that right hand, right? And doesn't doesn't have to pay for it with that left hook right there. I think he blocks that. Um, but again, very slow to move off the line, which is interesting because in the, the Toronto fight, I think his very next fight after this, he moves off the line like a madman. And we're going to be doing a film study on that one too. But this one is mostly to highlight um, the timing that he sets up on the right hand. Um, or the, the timing that he sets up for that right hand uh, from Kamal. Again, look at how Kamal reacts to it from the front, right? Changes level, right? Kamal goes to catch it and then eats a body shot. Very similar. I think he's landed that punch three times now. Um, but again, picking up on count on timings for, um, or not timings, uh, feints and how Kamal reacts to the feints. Um, but not a, not a great amount of defense, with all the, the moving off the line and stuff. I think I want to watch it in real time, to be honest. Because it's taking a long time. Here we go. So they come out. Ah, this is much better. Look at how fast they look too, right? Is this real time or is this... Man, they, they look fast right now. God. Doesn't that make them look so much more impressive all of a sudden? This can't be real time. This has to be fast. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell right now. All that slow mo really caught, really threw me off guard. But uh, let's get back to watching those timings of Kamal Russell. Again, right? Faints and then shoots a jab and then, yeah, this is not real time. This cannot be. That's just way too fast. This is not real time either. Anyway, we'll we'll just go with it. I can't tell, but uh, he faints him once, right? And now Derevchenko is following him back with body shots, right? Very smart. Get him to bring his hands down so you can go to the head later, right? Maybe that's it. Maybe he just hasn't picked up on the fact that he can go to the head, right? But check this out. Boom. Now, it doesn't land, right? But he goes to fly out of his guard, and Derevchenko is trying to counter him with his own jab when he's not ready, to follow him back, right? He does land his own jab, but look at how open he is for this left hook, right? He does have his chin kind of blocked, right, with um, with his forearm, but his temple is still open. Well, this side, right, um, is still open, and it's not that hard to get him out of position, right? Because he thinks, right, that it's going to be a jab. He doesn't know that it's going to be a jab, um, but he does do a good job of not getting hit by it regardless. But again, it's not that hard to get him out of position. You know, just one feint, you could get him to con commit to his own jab, right? And then go over the top of Der Derevchenko's own jab. Um, and now, the reason that that's important to point out is that is exactly what Golovkin did to knock out Martyrosian, is bait the jab, get the jab to come out, and then go right over the top of it. So that's a skill that we know that Golovkin has. And again, same tactic, right? Dips to the left, dips to the right, try to hide that right hand. Um, and the reason that it lands, right, boom, is because of the fact that Derevchenko's head is always on the line. You know, he doesn't have good head movement. He's not controlling his opponent with the lead hand, right? He's not, boom, slipping like this, fainting, constantly doing stuff, you know, to keep Russell busy. So Russell's able to do whatever he wants and kind of land that shot. Now, I do like the fact that after he takes a step back and then slips and gets away from the, the cross, right? But again, Kamal Russell doing a very good job of controlling him. So even though he gets into position, right, 
Derevchenko beats him to the line again, so he can come back, boom, with that right hand. But Russell is controlling him, and Russell stops him from being able to land that shot. Russell, you know, very good fighter. Um, I think he needs to work on a few things, obviously, because uh, he got KO'd. But, man, doesn't this look like it's moving really fast? Maybe it's just because I've been watching it in slow-mo the whole time. But again, right, following the jab back, jab, jab, and then Derevchenko trying to take that jab away, right, by countering it. If he counters it enough, he can take that jab away, and then Kamal will have no recourse other than to let Derevchenko in for fear of those counters. I guess it is in real time. If you look at the clock, man, they are moving fast, aren't they? Whew. Real fast. <clears throat> so, shoots that right hand, and again, right, Kamal Russell, right, ducks down onto that right leg and gives away the fact that he is going to throw a right hand, right, and uh, again, picking up on those patterns, Derevchenko is able to counter him with that right hand, but look at how, look at what happens after he lands that left hook, right, he stays on the line and then starts slugging with Russell, right, he does well, right, Oops. He does well in the exchange, takes an angle, moves back after, right? Boom. Right here, he takes a step back, another angle, as Russell falls in and then lands a great right hand. But look at how often he stays on the line, even after landing a punch, right? He doesn't defend himself after. He doesn't bring his hands up, use defensive responsibility and move. Again, um, Russell fainting, shooting the jab right there, eating a body shot. Um, and this is exactly, exactly what happens when he gets when he lands the right hand over the top instead, right? This is exact the exact same sequence except that he goes to the head instead. Um, and we'll see. We're not going to watch it again, but um, again, Russell, whoops, faint and then probing, right? And it's not hard to time him uh, because of that. But again, look at look at this combination right here, right? One, two, boom, eats a body shot, body shot, body shot, right? And why is that? Because he stays on the line. Now, this one's not clean. This one's very clean, and then this one's clean. Well, let's make sure, right? Because I know you guys sometimes say crazy shit in the comments. But kind of grazing. Looks like it lands. Maybe it's on the elbow. We'll just say it's on the elbow because I don't want to hear it. But then look at this very clean body shot right there. Like so close to the liver that that could have been a knockout shot. Um, and that's because of the fact that um, he uses head movement, right? Head movement to uh, move off the line. And it's just it's just not the, the smartest thing, right? If any of those punches were feints, he could get Derevchenko out of position very easily and set him up for another shot. Instead, all he had to do was follow up those shots um, and throw punches, the, the most basic way to do it, um, and still be very effective. Again, um, timing his jab, right? There's no feint here, right? It's just a slight dip forward and then shoots the jab. But um, Derevchenko is able to time him yet again and come back with the, all those, those extra shots. Um, and then Russell being very predictable, right? Uh, throwing that right hand. Now there's something going on in the crowd. Someone's got their camera on. So we'll just kind of skip past that. Derevchenko, again, right? No setup to this right hand. I'm not sure what he saw to make him think that he was going to be able to land it. Um, but not a lot of setup. Not a lot of fainting. Not a lot of probing right, uh, shooting the jab, and look at how he comes forward with the cross block, right, at least he has some defense, right, very smart, um, but the fact that he doesn't set his jabs up, he does only a little bit of feinting, you know, very similar to uh, what Kamal does, right, feint here, right, and now he explodes out of his guard, um, and it's just not that hard to time him, um, so not a lot of great setups, not a lot of great defense, but very high IQ, very good at setting um, setting traps, you know, like basic traps. 
Uh, decent job right there, getting off the line and not eating extra shots. Um, I wonder why he hasn't been doing that more in the in the fight. Maybe he just didn't respect uh, Russell's power. Ooh, looks really fancy right there, right? Rolling and slipping, right? But imagine if any of these punches were feints, right? Or probes, which Golovkin loves to use, right? If you imagine getting your opponent to stay on the line with you all that time, um, you're going to be able to walk them into something, right? And I think that Golovkin is much better on offense than... Um, than Mr. Russell is. Again, almost walking into this shot because he doesn't set his shots up very well, right? Explodes out of his guard. Um, explodes out of his guard and almost eats a counter right hand, right? Because he's not fainting, he's not probing, and he's not picking up. He's not picking up on when. Um, when Russell is looking to counter and when Russell is looking not to counter. Um, that's going to be something that's very dangerous for him against somebody like Golovkin, who can counter while going forward um, and is very good with his offense. Um, but there's not a lot to break down right here just because it's, you know, the camera angle is really difficult. Um, but again, staying on the line, throwing punches in combination. Um, and even though he looks great doing it, he's flashy. Um, he's... He's not setting these punches up well. Like I said, he's not defending himself. He's not moving off the line. That wasn't bad, though. That was good. I love this. So uh, he shoots that jab, right? So let's see if that, that there was that timing again. He faints him. Faints him. Or there he goes. <laughs> he faints him, and now Derevchenko knows that the, the jab is coming or another probe or something is coming after it, right? And he slips it, goes to the body, body. And look at how he, he pushes up on him. Now, I want to talk about this. Um, look at how Derevchenko's arm is around um, Russell's body, right? His, I don't think his, his right arm is, but his left arm is around his body, right? So when he comes up and bodies up with him, right, he's kind of holding him here, right? What he should be doing is what Mayweather does, right? And Mayweather is really good at this, is bodying up, right, but keeping your forearm in, right? So see how his glove is on the outside, right, and he's pinning... Russell's arm to his face. So Russell can't punch with his right hand, right? Because it's pinned, right? But you could get that same pinning done with your elbow, with your elbow being on the outside instead of your glove being on the outside. So instead of being here, right? You're here, right? So your your forearm is touching his glove. That way you can push off, right? And control your opponent, right? And control their glove and then boom, come with the right hand, right? Or you can push off this way, Right, lean into them and take an angle this way, and boom, 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 come with some shots like that. Um, but I think it's like a fundamental mistake for inside fighting. And to be honest, inside fighting is not only scary as hell, but it's also really difficult to teach because you have to have people that know how to fight on the inside in order to train fighting on the inside. Otherwise, you can just get away with doing stuff like this, right? Spinning them and catching them when you move off the line. But uh, he would be able to do this so much easier if his arms were or on the inside. Boom, and he catches him with that shot. And that's a product of beating Kamal to the line, right? Now, notice every time that he's done that before, uh, Kamal has had his hands on Derevchenko, and he's been able to push off, right? Look at how uh, Kamal's left glove, right, is in front of his own face instead of on Derevchenko, pushing off. Right? And he winds up getting caught with that shot. Beautiful work right there. But again, not setting up his offense. He has this very telegraphed right hand and then eats a body shot, eats another body shot while he stays on the line. And again, does that right hand land? Not really. It's not a real right hand. But he stays on the line, right? And it's just not that hard to hit this guy. And I think that that's going to be a problem when he fights somebody like Golovkin who can really, really hit. Again, not hard to get him out of position. Jab, right? He thinks the right hand is going upstairs, and he goes to the body instead. Doesn't look like it lands. Like a very glancing blow. But again, not moving off the line, not controlling Kamal, right? So that's another thing that I want to talk about real quick, is especially since it's at the end of the round, right? There's He has no control over Kamal. 
Kamal can feint and probe and do all these things that he wants to do, that all the things that Golovkin is really good at doing. Um, he can do all those things anytime he wants to um, because... because um, because Derevchenko is not controlling him, right? Derevchenko is not controlling the space between them, right? Sorry about that, guys. Let me turn my ringer down real quick. <laughs> um, but the idea is, and I talked about it earlier, right? Remember when he got him on the ropes, right? And he ducked down and he threw that right hand, boom. And then Derevchenko's like, oh, right hand, ah. Oh, I got to move off the line, oh. And all of a sudden, Kamal gets a free pass, to get off the ropes, right? And that's controlling your opponent, right? Even if that shot doesn't land, right? He's able to stop Derevchenko from landing his own shot um, or setting up his own punches. Now, the idea where you're controlling your opponent, you want to be fainting them, right? You want to show them the lead hand, ah, ah, right? And then Derevchenko goes, oh, he's Derevchenko does this, right? See how he takes a step back? And Kamal doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't even have to commit this much, and he can get uh, Derevchenko to move back just by going, huh, huh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And very similar to this shot right here, not this one. This one right here, where he feints a 1-2, and he can get Derevchenko to take a step back, crouch out of position, right? And he can control Derevchenko. There you go, Derevchenko. Um... He can control him and get him to do what he wants to do um, uh, simply by using more feints and more probes because of the fact that Deryovchenko is not occupying the space between them. He's not doing his own feinting, his own head movement, his own rolling, his own lead hand control, right? He's not doing his own baiting. Um, he's kind of ABC boxing him. Now, as far as like a grade from this performance in the first two rounds... I would give him like a C++, you know, um, very good trap setting, right? He looks fast, he looks athletic, he's sharp, but he stays on the line too long. And even like, I don't want to say like an amateurish fighter, right? Because Kamal Russell does have some professional skills, you know, he does look to control his opponent. He does use feints, not as many as he should, not as many probes as he should, um, but he has decent defense with controlling Derevchenko and moving off the line. Um, um, and the reason that I picked this fight is because these are a lot of the skills that Golovkin actually does have. So it is interesting to see that he's able to, um, to deal with them in some regard. Now, we do get to notice that um, Kamal Russell is very predictable, right? He gets knocked out on the fifth round by the same exact the same exact timing that he had been setting up um, or he'd been giving away the whole fight, right? So feint and then right hand or feint and then jab. And then finally, Deryovchenko slips it and then comes over the top instead of going to the body like he had been um, to take advantage of it. But it took him five rounds to really make Kamal Russell pay for a trap that he started setting in round one or a timing that he picked up on round one or a pattern, right? Um, and I don't know if that bodes super well for him, you know, because to be honest, um, Russell was just giving it away the whole fight. But anyway, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the ducking thing, right? Obviously, Daryovchenko just became the IBF. It's not like he's been the IBF mandatory for like a year, right? It just so happened, right? It just happened recently. Um, and... He was supposed, Golovkin was supposed to fight Canelo, right? But he still has to fight on May 5th, right? That can't change. That's not going to change. <clears throat> it's arguably the biggest day in boxing uh, all year. He's not going to give up that date, right? So, and But he's not going to also say, oh, um, I was preparing for Canelo, so now I'm going to fight this guy instead who has a completely different style and has, you know, 450 fights um, amateur and professional and World Series of Boxing combined that all of a sudden I'm going to fight this guy, right? And for what? He's going to fight the, the one of the most unknown middleweights in, in the entire division on Cinco de Mayo? HBO's not going to sanction that. HBO's not going to be like, yeah, that's a really good idea. Let's get you to fight this guy that nobody's ever heard of. Obviously, like, 
you know, a, a lot, no casual fans know who Sergei Deryavchenko is. None. And even most hardcore boxing fans probably don't. They're probably just like, oh, I heard that guy's name before. Uh, and they probably are thinking of Vasily Lomachenko, you know. But um, uh, as far as ducking him, you know, it's a ridiculous statement. You know, there's just so much more politics that go into it. And I'm actually hoping that Golovkin will fight Deryavchenko in his next fight. Um, and rather than getting stripped by the IBF or after talking to the IBF, maybe he gets to fight Billy Joel Saunders instead and have a chance to unify the entire middleweight division. Who knows? But, um, um, but it's, it's not a duck, you know, you, you just have to understand like for, for a while when Andre Berto was the champion, they were showing all his championship fights in the welterweight division, but they stopped wanting to show them. They didn't want to pay Andre Berto, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to fight his mandatories because they were garbage, you know? So you're not just getting pressure from the the sanctioning bodies to fight who you're supposed to fight. Um, you're getting pressure from the networks to fight big names, to bring in big money, you know? And that's one of the things that... Um, oh, and another thing about ducking, right? A lot of people think that, like, nobody wants to fight Errol Spence, Right? Nobody wanted to fight Golovkin before he had all the titles. Now everyone's calling him out. That's not because they think they can beat him. It's just that he's the only one that has the belts, right? Billy Joe Saunders, right, has a belt. But they're just, all of a sudden, all of the money is in uh, Golovkin's court, right? Um, granted, Canelo was still going to get first pick of who he fights when, when they go their separate ways. But because he's worth more money... But now people are calling Golovkin out because they want attention. They want, they know that it gets them a lot of media. And it's interesting because uh, going to the welterweight division, you have Errol Spence, right? You've got Danny Garcia trying to fight Keith Thurman. Um, Sean Porter trying to fight Keith Thurman. Um, everybody's trying to fight Keith Thurman. Not only has he been out of the ring for a long time, but he's you know coming off of an injury. Um, but Danny Garcia and Keith and Sean Porter both have losses to him. Of course they want to avenge them. But you know what else? They're also really high in the rankings for that mandatory slot. And it's not easy to become the mandatory for, for a title. Um, and they want to climb that ladder as fast as they can. Because the championship fights are just worth more money. Um, especially in terms of if you're going to fight Errol Spence who has... Does he have two titles now? Um... Um, if you bring more to the table, like you have a, a belt, you can get those unification dollars. You know, people are going to be more excited. Um, so it's not just as simple as people are just ducking, but it's just, it's money, you know, it's money. And for the sport of boxing, that sucks. But if it weren't, it weren't for that kind of stuff, it weren't for money, if it weren't for, um, um, all that stuff. We would never have had a fight like Mayweather Pacquiao. Do you guys remember being at your friend's house who you didn't even know knew the name Floyd Mayweather? And you're watching the fight at their house and they're just, they want to watch it and they're interested? That's because Mayweather, you know, and now a lot of people think like Mayweather was ducking Pacquiao for all those years because of steroids and all this and all that. That's not it, right? Go watch Legendary Nights, um, HBO Legendary Nights, and watch Hagler Leonard. Right, watch that one, uh, and it. They talk about how Leonard retired. He he like he he specifically makes sure that he goes to like I think he he specifically invites Hagler to his last fight, gets him all up in the ring, and then he retires. And Hagler gets all pissed off. Oh, I thought he was going to announce the fight. I thought he was going to do this. And then five years later. Leonard, when he's fighting, I think it was John the Beast Mugabe, and he showed that he was hittable, right? Leonard said, I can fight him, I can beat him, and I can win. Uh, I'm going to fight him. And there was a five-year a five year wait for that fight to happen, right? All Mayweather was doing was trying to beat that record. There was no, like, controversy. There was no, none of that shit. Mayweather was just playing games, you know? He was just being like, I know I'm going to fight him. I know I'm going to beat him later. Um, and he just knew that the five-year wait thing was one of those records. Oh, one of the most anticipated fights. Not one of the most, but the most anticipated fight in all of boxing, right? 
Um, and that's what he was waiting for, you know, and did it pay off? Yeah, he made $300 million, right? Or did he make 200 and Pacquiao made 100? I don't know. It was a lot of money. It was, it was a lot, a lot, a lot of money. It was a very smart decision. But it wasn't ducking. It wasn't like all that stuff. Like people say that stuff, but they don't know Mayweather. Come on. How are you going to watch Mayweather all these years, watch every 24 at 7 episode, and never put that stuff together? You know? I don't know. Casuals, man. Casuals.